Oh, whoa, it's dark in here. I need to turn off the lights behind. Whoops. There we go. I didn't test that out. Good morning, everyone. All I'm gonna say is this. You could not write the story of 2020. You could not write it. And John said, nope, not even Stephen King. So I got up at the crack of dawn this morning. It was, it was not funny, because this is not funny. But John said at 5.30, okay guys, I get up at 6.30 in the morning and John gets up at 7, 7.15, he was up and he goes, well, you won't believe 2020. And I, instantly I thought of the TV show 2020. And he said, no, you won't believe 2020. And, and well, what are you talking about? And then he told me and it was like, oh, so, okay. Happy Friday. It's October 2nd. And I'm on the home stretch on my cave uh, quilt for quilting it. It's taken a long time. Straight line quilting takes a long time. And as far as the weather here today, because I see Wisconsin, it's foggy and this and that, it is going to be 100, but our uh, the air is bad, 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 bad because of the glass fire. And I was trying to figure out how far, how much contained it is. Um, Pokey is fine, as far as I know, she's up in Napa, but she does have her um, trailer hitched on and, and ready to go. But yesterday was really great. Yesterday, William turned four. And I can remember when the kids were little. Uh, Lennox's birthday's in a couple weeks, so Adair would always have these big giant parties. And it would land at my house, and it was okay. Oh, actually, one year I go, now how many people are coming? She wouldn't answer me. And I said, now how many people are coming here to my house? Guys, I do not live in a palatial mansion or on a ranch, okay? And finally, she admitted it might be 100 people. Well, I freaked out, okay? But then one of her friends decided that, that it was no big, no big deal. We'd open up the back because we are onto a field. So, okay, so I wanna show you something that's like super cool. I wanna show you his cake. He's into dinosaurs, he loves green, dinosaurs and Legos. So those Legos were consumable. The cake on the inside was green, like kind of a uh, strata, like layers of green, and it was so good. But this is what you need to know. A 12-year-old made this cake. I wonder what she is going to be doing in the future. You guys, a 12-year-old, seriously. So that was a hit. Now, John and I are both up. Uh, the COVID weight's coming. It's coming. <laughs> Isn't we had hot dogs and hamburgers and all that good stuff. And what was wonderful was that it was both sets of grandparents and then their best friends who have three little girls. And those five kids get along like there's no tomorrow. And it's even like if something were to happen to Jerry and Adair, this is the family that would take the kids. So these people are in our bubble. And what they say is true. However old you're gonna be is how many people should be there. He turned four and there were four kids there and it was a riot. Even though it was smoke infused in the air, the four grandparents said, you know, you guys can stay inside. We're gonna go sit outside. It was like, oh my gosh, it was so much fun. So the other thing I wanted to share, which really makes my heart happy, is when I was down in Los Angeles, I don't think it was the last time, maybe the time before, so I'm gonna say, a year ago, I think I've shared this with you, I showed the kids how to stitch, like how I learned to stitch. And uh, Shelly, their mom, sent me this picture the other day. They pulled out the box and they started stitching away. And so whatever I taught them, they uh, it stuck with them. So that's like super awesome. They like sewing. And that's when Lev said, maybe she wasn't an artist. Maybe she is a quilter or a sewist. And I said, no, that's that. And speaking of that, Joanne Sharp, I love you. She called me at 9.15 this morning. And in her 
yearly thing that she's doing where I'm doing the book and I've shown you, um, i talked about in one of her lessons in October. So that, that was like really super cool. Thank you, Joanne. We learn from each other. Okay, so I've got just a couple questions and then I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do. I, how do you get to the forum? You go to the front page and you'll see those words across, you know, it goes, what's the first one that overlays on top of it? Get rid of that. The quilt show, watch, learn, see quilts, connect, and shop. If you go to connect, there's a drop down that comes and then you'll see forum there. I think it might be the fourth one down or whatever. There was no way I could snap it to show you. It kept disappearing when I tried to take a picture of it. So that's how easy it is to get to the forum. When you get in there, what you're going to do is, look at that, hi. <laughs> what you're going to do is you're going to go look at the top. There's a bunch of different choices and I always just go to recent topics and then things come up that are the most pertinent, all right? So I commission you to go look. It's been extremely inspirational, and it's where we can connect as a group. Like I said, I'm feel Mavis from South Africa. Okay, Mavis, you just got my attention. This makes me so happy. I can't begin to tell you. So with that, I, I need to apologize for not being more clear on certain things here. And so on um, Wednesday, I know it was confusing. If I get more than two comments directed at me saying, I'm confused, I'm lost, I know we have a real problem. Now I gotta get rid of that thing. We don't wanna look at that. So I t John, it, it was interesting. It's the magic numbers, it's the upscaling, it's the this and that. So John said, I said, okay, I'm gonna address it on Friday. And he said, why don't you make a video? So I made a video. And what I wanna do is show you the video. And it was funny, cause John didn't get it. He didn't get it. Finally, he got it, and it's about my upsizing, it's about the instructions in the book, and I will tell you right now, the instructions in the book are exactly right. You can use those. I'm just not that accurate, so I like to upsize it. But what I'm gonna show you here is how you figure out if you're gonna upsize it to what, how to get the number that you're gonna want to trim it to. You don't have to. You can use the instructions in the book as is. So let's take a look at the video and then we will take a look-see. Find it here. And the, oh, I was gonna say this. And when it was all over, John goes, I get it, I get it. And then he repeated it back to me, and I said, that's it. That's exactly it. So here we go, guys. In talking about triangles, we're going to be basically talking about half square and quarter square triangles today and the magic numbers. This is the book that we are using, all right? It's by c and Publishing. It is a fabulous... I don't know why the volume's not working. Let me get John in here, okay? This was his idea. Hey, John, the volume's not working. Oh, it was? I couldn't hear. Oh, maybe because I turned mine down. Oh, okay. So John said you guys could hear it. Maybe my volume I've turned down. No, I don't know, honey. Don't go too far. Okay, here we go. Yeah, okay, so it's working. Let's go back. Sorry, guys. In talking about triangles, we're gonna be basically talking about half square and quarter square triangles today and the magic numbers. This is the book that we are using, all right? It's by c and Publishing. It is a fabulous book. I use it all the time. I do not know if we have them in the store right now, but I do know we have the digital copies in the store that's less expensive than this. But this book is one of the best tools I have. So let's take a look at basket E, which is what I'm going to suggest that you make this weekend. Let's take a look here, basket E. 
I think it's pretty cute. It's straightforward. It's just almost like this one, right? Only you've got things turned differently. You, these are turned differently and this is turned differently. Or there's a triangle here. So it's half square triangles for all the most part. Now guys, in looking at this book, this is why I love it so much. You have here basket E, page 12. You can make it in four inch, six inch, eight inch, 10 inch, 12 inch. These are the finished sizes, okay? And what we're gonna be playing with are the six inch ones, all right? And these are the cutting numbers. Cutting, 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 cutting. This is finished. Now you can do, you know, any of the sizes here will fit into our basket puzzle. Remember, you're not copying me directly. You're making blocks that we will put together like a jigsaw puzzle when it's done. Now you can use these numbers exactly as is. Just cut like that. I think the confusion has been when I've been telling you to up it an eighth and then trim it down. So you can just use these, but let's take a look at what's going on with magic numbers. Here's our little block. First of all, magic numbers, John said, why are they the way they are? I said, I don't know. I don't know, they just are. So for instance, if you're going to cut a square, let's say you're doing a nine patch, you always take the finished size and you add a half an inch to it. For a rectangle, you take the finished size and add a half an inch to it on the length and the width. So let's say, let's go back to the square. Let's say that this were gonna be four inches finished. I would be cutting the square at four and a half inches. And then when I get done sewing it, it will be four inches finished. So this is pretty straightforward right here. But when you get into triangles, you have other stuff going on. So basically there are two different kinds of triangles and they look exactly the same once they're cut. This is a half square triangle and that is what we have been dealing with up to this point. And this is a quarter square triangle. What differentiates them, because they both have their 90 degree, right there, is that half square, you have the outside edge on the straight of grain, and the quarter square, you've got opposite of the 90 degree on the straight of grain. Why do you care? You care because take, for example, this block, which we'll be doing, you've got your half squares, so you've got out here, all on the straight of grain. We have not yet got, gotten into quarter square triangles, all right? Always want the outside edge. There are magic numbers for here, and again, you don't ask why, it just is. Okay, for a half square triangle, it's the finished size plus seven eighths. So in the case of the block, where'd it go, that we're doing here, let's say, let's take A and B right here, all right? It says A, cut at two and three eighths and then cut corner to corner, okay? If I back seven eighths off of this, I know it's going to finish at one and a half. So, okay, I'm horrible at math, let's just say. I often will actually use my ruler and count out the numbers. So this is asking you to cut at two and three eighths, right? Let's just make sure, yeah, two and three eighths. So that's two, one, two, three. This is eight, eight segments going across, so it's one, two, three eighths right here, all right? Let's back off seven eighths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I know it's going to finish at two, one and a half, all right? So if you can't do the math in your head, and I completely understand it, get out your ruler and back it up. So you can, okay, wait, so now let's do this one. We haven't approached this yet, but I want you to understand the difference. For this particular 
triangle, and we'll be doing it next week, you take the finished size and you add one and a quarter to it. So let's just pretend, let me erase with my, I love, whoops, wrong one here, let me erase this. Okay, let's say I wanted it to finish one and a half on this outside edge. Okay, let's say I want it to finish one and a half. I'm going to add one and a quarter to it. So here's one inch and then one two. I would cut it at two and three quarters. So these magic numbers, I'm gonna put them next to each other so that you can come back to this and do a, um, like snap a picture of it or something because these are so vital, they're so true, they run every single, they, every single time. This is a half square and this is a quarter square triangle, okay? So that's those two things. So here's the deal, guys. You John said you're not hearing me talking. So, so here's the thing, you guys. You can use those numbers, and we'll get back to the video in a moment, but I size up, I love that expression, because I have a heck of a time getting my half square triangles exact. So let's talk about sizing up. But understand, you can use the numbers that are in the book, and you will just be perfectly fine. And use the numbers just exactly how they are in the book and you'll be fine but I choose to add an extra eighth of an inch to my cutting so that I can square these up these half square triangles into a perfect perfect number but then people say how do you do that okay so here we have this is gonna finish this is going to be what you're to cut the triangles out for A and B, two and three eighths. So let's go on my little magic fake ruler. Here's two and one, two, three and three eighths. You can do that. You can cut your square. You can then, you know, draw a line, sew on each side, use your sew steady or whatever you want and just press it. But sometimes it gets a little wonky when you're working with triangles. So I choose to go up one more eighth. So here I am at two and three eighths, one, two, three, which is what it's telling me to cut, but I've added an eighth. But then the question is, how do you know what to trim this thing at? I'm gonna go back to find the seven eighths, because remember that's the magic number for half square triangles. And I'm gonna go back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which takes me to this half square triangle will finish at one and a half. Now what I need to do is it's a one and a half inch half square triangle, but then it you need to add a half an inch to get up to the raw number for this. So I'm going to go up one a half an inch, one, two, three, four. I'm going to cut it at two inches raw, and then it will finish at one and a half. You don't have to do this. You can do just with the numbers in the book. And I want to talk about one other thing here. These are the ones you would perhaps, or these are the ones I just square up a little bit. I just add my eighth to. This F is exactly the same size as A and B. Let's take a look down here. F, cut the square at two and three eighths, and then cut it corner to corner. I do not, oh, sorry, there you go. I do not square, I do not cut it larger because I am not sewing it to another half square triangle. So again, you guys, these are the finished measurements of the block. These are the raw numbers of the component. 
Once you get that in your brain, you are going to be so good to go, you can't stand it. So thanks for letting me go through this again. Thanks for letting me have a do-over. Okay, I want to clarify one thing I said here, okay? On here, when we do this, the square up, it's the same size half square triangle to the other same size half square triangle. Oh, okay. Down here, yes, you are selling it to a half square triangle, but they aren't the same size. So this only works when you're doing it with these little guys right here. I hope that makes sense to you. Uh, I think it's like, for me, it was algebra where the light all of a sudden went on and I'm like, going, okay, I get it. So then what John asked me to do was to do one more and show you. So what I'm going to do is we're going to do C and D, that the center one, okay? We can do the size up thing. Again, you don't have to. So it is to be cut at three and seven eighths, the square, okay? I chose to go to four. So let me turn on this camera down here. I do love my new tool. <laughs> so I have cut these at four. And what we're going to be doing is this right here. All right. So where's my fake ruler here? Well, oh, I'll do this first. I'm going to go sew this. I'm going to use my sew steady mat. You again, you can also just draw uh, a line down the center and call it a day if you wanted to. I just loved it when John came in and it was like the fog was taken off his eyes. Because his thing is, why wouldn't you just do it the right size? And the reason is, is I'm not that perfect. And I will tell you who I learned this from, and she is about as perfect as it gets, is Sally Collins. We've done a show with her. She, her precision is amazing. And I found that the more a person is precise, the more you're gonna find that this is what they do. So, in my junk pile here, I brought over a rotary cutter. I brought over a ruler. And is that light on? I don't know. I don't think so. Let me turn the light on. There we go. I'm gonna cut it. Here we go. I'm gonna, I only need one of these, only need one. So I'm gonna go press one right here. Remember, always press right side up and then you can use your clapper or your iron or what, I mean, um, my, my old fashioned iron to set the seam just to make it nice and flat. So here we are. Where's my paper ruler here? Here we go. No, that's not it. Maybe I'll have to use it. Oh, there it is. Okay. So here we go. All right. So I was supposed to cut it at, at, was it three and seven eighths? Yeah. I was supposed to cut it at three and seven eighths. So let me go three and seven eighths. I'm going to go back seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That means that it's going to finish at three inches, but then I'm gonna to have to take off half an inch so that my raw square is good. And I'm going to, gosh, I'm doing this backwards. I've got to look at it. I'm gonna get myself in trouble big time. Okay, um, I'm going to, Okay, let me do it again. Three and seven eighths. I'm gonna go back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That means it's gonna finish. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Don't pay attention to that. So then I'm gonna add up one, two, three, four. I'm going to trim at three and a half, okay? So let's see what we have going on here. Don't try and do these things upside down. Just don't. So on here, I'm gonna line up my little diagonal. I'm going to put it at three and a half. 
can see here's three and a half and here's three and a half and then I'm going to trim and when I sew up it up it's going to finish at three which is what you want so there you go as far as the construction of the block it is extremely straightforward. It is what um, la what Wednesday's was. The only difference is this isn't these are turned differently, and I there's an extra triangle up here, so I don't feel compelled to have to piece the whole thing. The other thing you're going to find that as I work, the book might give me two color options, and in this case, I chose to do one, two, three, four. So. That might be a little hard for people to follow, but to me, the more the merrier. The more I can sneak in, the merrier. The merrier. So I hope this makes sense to you, what I've done. And again, if you're new to the game, I got an email from a email or Facebook from somebody saying her mom was trying to do it without this book. And I, I'm not going to give you all the numbers because then I would be in trouble with the publisher. So it's a very inexpensive tool that you will use over and over. We do have it in stock. I went and looked this morning. I made this video yesterday. Yesterday we had digital downloads, which means you can get it right now. And or we got this in stock. All right. So that's all good. And I don't know if we have any questions. Remember by remember you guys this too. As long as you pick sizes in this book that are divisible by like 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, you're going to be A-OK. -okay. And over my shoulder right there is the granddaddy of the, of the blocks, this big one. And this is where if I didn't square up for precision or square it, it, I would have never gotten it right. And yes, it does take a little bit more time, but the accuracy is so flippin' wonderful. So, oh good, Kathleen, you said the trimming to the size makes sense now, thank you. Yeah, and you know, there's other little games you can play in your mind to get it right, but I wanted to show the math of the whole thing. And so, what am I gonna do today? I'm gonna go do more of my machine quilting. I've got to get that quilt finished, my cave. And I'm going to go work in Joanne's book today. It is, again, going to be very hot. I can't, we can't even go out and walk. It's just disgusting. And so, um, I know my grandies can't hear this. So, okay, the kids were born, like, within a couple days of each other. They share a room. They love each other like there's no tomorrow, um, Lennox and William. And they're they're going to get the kids a new bedroom set up with kind of like bunk beds that can either be a fort or a bunk bed and half of it's going to be dinosaurs green and the other half is going to be mermaid pink and Adair has killed herself getting this ready. I'll have to get pictures and show you guys and so Jerry's taking the kids up to the cabin and Adair's uh, bestie, Sam, is going to come and they're going to get that room whipped into shape. So this is a very exciting weekend. And with that, I wish you wonderfulness. Enjoy this weekend. And um, now I know what they mean by October surprise. <laughs> wow. So, hey, you guys, I so appreciate you. I so appreciate you giving your time to me because I know time is very valuable. And don't forget this weekend, it's my understanding, the Lizzie Albright show is going to be free when it airs Sunday morning. So you're going to want to check that out. Ricky has been working on it like there's no, to, it has, this has been his passion for the last several years. The other thing is, if it's time to renew, do it while we still have this COVID special going on. A lot of you got six month memberships in the beginning of this whole COVID ordeal. And so um, it's a lot of you are up to being renewed. I, I would just consider getting the whole year because it's an excellent deal too. So have a lovely, lovely weekend. Go tell somebody you love them. And if they're in your bubble, give them a hug while you're at it. I think we all need a hug right now. Thanks, guys.